Fellow vintage drum collectors, Jim Messina here once again for Vintage Drums Talk, and we're on another vintage drum pick. I can't believe it. It's time once again. We got the call, and all we know is this is a set of what they called antique drums. Okay, now we know what that can mean. We can mean that can mean they're just kind of old drums to somebody, but I think these are pretty pretty good the way they were describing them metal snare and they couldn't really describe the lugs but anyways we're gonna go look at them and we're traveling to Arcadia Florida all right uh, we kind of don't know where we're going pretty rural but we're stoked about it so come on with me let's go check out this set be right back really getting rural now we are out in the country this is a uh, this is really out in the sticks to tell you the truth you guys but we're gonna find it huh orange groves This is really getting real. The road keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. I thought we were out in the country stick out in the sticks before, but hey, we're gonna find that set no matter what. Hey, wait a minute. The road start. I thought the road was bad before. What do we got here? The road is disappearing. It's turning into like dirt. Or what is this? I don't know, but we're on our way, you guys. Uh, what do we have here? Suddenly the road just turns into this. This is getting scary now, you guys. We are in some small town, Arcadia, Florida. And the road, the main road, which got smaller and smaller, just turned into private property. I guess we're going this way. I hope nobody shoots us or anything, but here we go. Look, no, no trespassing again. I think they're serious. They got these signs all over the place here. No trespassing again. Maybe we should turn back. I don't know. We're supposed to go this way. Down that road. Well, let's try down here. I think... Let's go. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, Jim. Nice to meet Hello, you, Jim. Sir. 
Great. Great. Hey, Great. Hey, Great. Good to meet you, Terry. Hi, uh, Tim. How are you? I don't believe we've met. No. Nope. Nope. What's oh, your name, haven't. sir? David. David, good to meet you, David. David Myers. This is some great property here, I'll tell you. We oh, had a time. I love coming out in the country here, but uh, let's see what you got. What are we looking come at on here? Now. Come on. Thank you. I, I really appreciate you letting me come onto your property and see what you got here. This is very interesting. Oh, we have all kinds of stuff uh -huh. out here. <laughs> So this is the building. This is the building. This is, this is the barn. We're going in the barn right now. Come on, let's see what we got. <laughs> well, 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 look at all yeah. this stuff. Dave, is this all your stuff? Yes, sir. How did you, look at, guys, look at this room. We came here to see some bugs, but look at all the other stuff that you, this is a whole room full of antique furniture and fishing rods and look at the, jeez, just about everything in here. I love yeah. it. Man. Anything you could ask for, just right. about. Now, how did you come by all this stuff? What's uh? When, when I retired, I wanted a place on the river. Uh huh. And that's where I'm at. I'm on the river, all East right. River, in uh, this other county, and I've been here 23 years now. And you and collect you the all this stuff? He has whipped up stuff from his first wife, who uh -huh. passed away, his second wife, who passed away, and. Now we're trying to thin things out. <laughs> well, yeah. well, so this is what we're going to take a look at today. Yeah, this uh, is it. This is what we came to see, guys, along with all this other stuff. But let's hone in on what we're going to see here today. Well, all my vintage enthusiast friends, Jim Messina here once again for VintageDrumsTalk.com. You saw us coming in the barn here. Well, finally, we got to look around. I'm here with Terry and Dave who got a hold of me. Actually, I got a hold of them. Somebody to give me a tip. They were they had this old drum set. Look at this. And they're going to tell us a little bit how they came by this set. As you can see, it's the real deal. And we're going to take a look at the whole thing. Terry, Dave, thanks for inviting me into this barn that we've got with all kinds of stuff. But we want to hear about this drum set. And you guys know it definitely predates the 60s, the 50s, even the 40s. What do we got here, folks? How did you end up with this set? Well, this drum set was my mother's uh -huh. while she was in college back in the 20s. All she right. She played in the college orchestra. Uh -huh. And she kept it all the time. And she passed away in 93. I picked the stuff up out of the house and brought it here. And it's been here with me since then. And it's been in this room for how long? It's been in this this barn here for 23 years now. 23 years. Jeez, that's long a long time. time. <laughs> How old was your mother when she passed away? 87. So she was 87, and, and this was her drum set to... In, in college, in the 20s. Okay, she played it in the 20s, okay. Right. Ha! Well, I think we should take a look at this set, guys. This is what we came to see. And many of you, you know, already know a lot about vintage drums, but I like to speak to the beginning collectors, too. For In case you don't know, we're going to go over some things, okay? We've got... Uh, an old set here with calfskin heads, okay? Now, you, everybody knows that we use Mylar heads today. They came in a lot later, but look, calfskin heads on this bass drum. We've got a wood block. We're going over this real quick. There's a snare drum here we're going to take a look at. We have a, an original stand. We've got some drumsticks, all right? And back here, there's an old music stand. I think everybody kind of recognizes that design, but let's start with this obvious here. We've got a bass drum with calf skin heads, okay? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thumb screws, okay? Now I want to let you know, look, you guys have seen these before. We have center posts, and this is single tension. These are single tension rods, which is very indicative of the 20s and even before. Uh, it looks like uh, this finish is, is, is different. Usually, guys, we would see maple hoops, right? with either a uh, mahogany or uh, walnut finished shell, okay? We have the standard eye hook here. A lot of times they would use that in marching, okay? Because back in those days, that's what tells us, this is an early set. They would use it for marching, and then they would turn them into a set like this. They were just put together as a set, as we'll look at in a little bit. This, uh, this set would have come with a pair of spurs, okay? They would also be hoop clamped. Everything was hoop clamped on here. So we've got a head that's intact, calfskin. Normally we'd see them split, 
sometimes they have paintings on them. This one does not, okay? They would sometimes they would have a factory painting on the front of maybe a, a mountain stream or if you look at some of the catalogs, you'll see those, uh, you'll see examples of those, uh, those paintings, factory paintings. And this one is also in great shape, so we lucked out here. You know why, though? We're here in Arcadia, Florida. It gets pretty muggy in, in the, the summertime, and we get our cold days. I think uh, uh, in, in February, it gets pretty cold down here from what I understand. But look, this is pretty loose, okay? That is actually why it survived. If they had tightened this down, what the drummers would do when the, when the calfskin heads would sag because of the humidity, what do they do? They tighten up on their keys. That tightens their head. And then they leave it. So what happens when, when the humidity goes away and they tighten up, then that's where you get the splits. But luck down here, boy. Very good. Uh, I, I don't know if this is a 22 or a 20. I, I'm not sure. I meant to bring a... Take measure? Yeah, but... Uh, you know, this is unusual because in those days, mostly they used 28-inch bass strip. That was, that was the standard in, in the larger orchestras. And I don't know if that was a carryover from marching bands where they would use... Uh, larger bass drums, but this is, uh, I'm thinking this is a student set, okay, we're going to take a look at that. Now, that's, that's enough for the bass drum right now. We're going to take a look at a snare drum that I understand we have over here in this, in this tan bag. Now, Terry, you've had it in this bag, too, all the time? Yes. Let's see what we got. I haven't really looked at this yet, but I'm seeing calfskin heads already. Yeah, that's the original case that it was in. Okay. And that's that's standard for the air. There's the the, can, the 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 infamous tan canvas bags that they used to use. But here's our snare. I'm guessing this is a 14 by five, probably, or five and a half. And from what I see right now, this is definitely a Ludwig. Here's our professional strainer right here. All right. Now that okay, that's a bit frozen up. That could be unlocked. Uh, Got a center bead, eight lugs. Look, calfskin head, good. Now the thing with the bottom, and this is very interesting. Look at this. This is called the slunk head. Okay, usually they use, they use a thinner head, just like we use thinner heads today in mylar heads. This is a, a, a thinner cut of calfskin. Okay, and they call it the slunk head. But if you'll notice here, this stamp. I want to show you. Now remember, we've got a Ludwig snare, but back in the 20s, the Leedy company was very big in tanning and very big in making, producing their own drum heads. So my guess is your mother probably played this set, the slunk head split, and she replaced it with a Leedy head. And you can see right here, it says Leedy and UKA. This is a stamp that we've seen before. Okay, so that explains that. We've got, uh, these are typical, uh, these are the red type of snare wires, and they're basically kind of like the twine kind, but uh, these can be replaced, but you know, it's interesting when you look at drums from this era, by today's standards, if you were to play this drum, even at its best, when it's in proper working order, Today's drummer would consider it a very boxy sound. They would not like the sound because they used to play differently in those days. Uh, they used to do a lot of brushwork and they would play march type songs, mm -hmm. march type beats. So, uh, But I, I have a bit of news on this particular drum. Uh, it's an eight lug, okay? These are called two lugs. But I believe that this particular drum was the same model that they used to make what they call Black Beauties. We term them Black Beauties today, okay guys? Do you know what Ludwig Black Beauties are? Well, I think this is the same drum, okay? Uh, brass, the only thing that makes them different is that in the Black Beauties, you would have the shell was uh, plated in black nickel and heavily engraved in the scroll pattern, and this is probably 1923, which would make that the scroll pattern. That's when they used that. Heavy engraving, black nickel, and the hoops, all the other hardware, the, the lugs, everything would be done in a faux gold finish, which was a, basically a copper plating with a, with a gold plated lacquer over the top. If you've seen Black Beauties, you know what I mean, okay? But 
This is basically the same drum that they used to make those. And Black Beauties were, you know, great looking in those days, but they didn't last long because that nickel plating would, you know, the black nickel plating would come off very easily, and they stopped making that after a while. But if you wanted the same sound, drummers today sometimes they will put standard heads on these, in, in other words, mylar heads, and you'll get that Black Beauty sound, but you won't have the, the Black Beauty look. Okay, that's all. That's the only difference. But very interesting. Uh, here are the sticks that came with it, and here's the snare stand that came with it, which leads me to believe that this is actually part of a student kit, okay? A student drum set. There would have been uh, cymbals that would clamp onto here, you would have the spurs, uh, other, other things, you know, wood blocks, cowbells, things like that. Uh, but I think we can find maybe some kind of catalog uh, illustration that this set may have been. And I understand you had other parts that went to this set? At one time we had the cymbals, the triangle, the... Spike Jones whistle. Okay, Spike Jones whistle. And you probably had a, a foot pedal. Yeah, had a foot early pedal. Ludwig yeah, pedal. So far everything's indicating that this was an actual set not put together separately. So we're going to take a look in a minute here. We're going to go see, I have a catalog I can look in some Ludwig catalogs, but I have a different catalog and a different story to go along with this. We'll be right back. Hold on a second. Well, look, we have something else to show you about this snare drum. I just happen to have a Dixie Music House catalog, okay? Uh, but what's interesting is I found the snare drum that we were just talking about. Dixie House is basically a distributor. And in their catalog here, you can see that they sell Ludwig drums. I believe this drum right here is the drum that we're talking about. I think it's a 4x14. Then the next would be the 5x14, 6 by 14 Then you jump to 4x15, 5x15, and finally the 6 by 15 But look, these are the all-metal drums made by Ludwig that the Dixie House was selling, okay? Now down here at this drum, you can see there's our professional strainer, okay? That's why we know this is a Ludwig drum also. But I want to show you something real interesting having to do with the whole set. Look at this page right here. I think that the bass drum and the snare drum that we have here is part of a set something like this. It could be an entry level set, but look, it has basically the same snare except this is a sick lug. Uh, here's the same snare stand. It would have come with a pedal. It would have come with a cymbal that mounts, okay, with hoop clamps, and probably a lot of these other things. Now, Terry and Dave, you said that you had what? The cymbal? Mm. What yeah, else? The cymbals, the triangle, the Spike Jones whistle, the foot pedal. Okay. So there were other traps. They call them yeah. traps and that went along with this, this set. And that would make up the complete catalog version of this. Uh, which I think is, is real interesting. It's always fun when you can see something that you have that's an old antique that you can actually see in a catalog. Yeah. That's great. So there you have it. This is a, this is a pretty good uh, version of a representation uh, <laughs> of a 1923 introductory set. It's missing a few pieces, but uh, hey, you got a great snare drum here that we uh, already said uh, was the same model basically that they used for Black Beauties. Terry and Dave, you've got a real interesting yeah, set here. Band. Vintage drum collectors love this kind of stuff. You've got the correct stand and a music stand. And uh, the old sticks. This is a... Uh, drum collectors love this kind of thing. I hope you've enjoyed what we're showing you here. Jim Messina for Vintage Drums Talk, along with my friends Terry and Dave here. We had a great time today looking at this set. Everybody, have fun. Keep right. on collecting. We'll see you later.